Good day and welcome to Insight, the program where we do an in-depth study into God's Word. We continue with our study on manage until He comes. And today our topic is the tithing contract. Once again with me in the studio today is Rune Furstenberg of Compass Pastoral Ministries. We will be looking at how much is a tithe? Where are we supposed to take the tithe to? What is the purpose of the tithe and how do I tithe? Please put your notifications on, subscribe if you have not subscribed, like and share these videos with your friends so that they can also get insight into God's Word. Good day, Rene. It is good to have you in the studio once again, and welcome at our third study in the series, Manage Until Jesus Comes. It's lovely to be here and lovely to welcome you all, and I hope we're going to have a wonderful discussion today. Yes, but before we start, as usual, we are going to ask uh, that we bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for being in your presence, and we ask that as we are going to your word, that your spirit will lead us and guide us and guide our thoughts and our discussions. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today we are at lesson number three and the tithing contract. Now, last week we, we quickly looked at... Now we touched on it a bit, but I think this week the rubber meets the road. Yes. And are we going to be very frank when it comes to tithing? Yes, we looked at, at, at two different... Um, contracts last week, salvation contract and the tithing contract. And uh, some people think, let me just quickly go back with a reminder, we get uh, unilateral and bilateral contracts. Now, we have seen that salvation is a bilateral contract. God does something, we need to do something. Tithing is also a bilateral contract, we need to do something, then God will bless us. Mm. So that is where we are moving from this point. And um, where else to start? As from, once again, Malachi chapter 3. And we're going to read verse 10. Okay. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room enough not be room enough to store it in right so once again there is a promise that we should bring the tithe and if we bring it there will be a blessing that you will have so much abundance that you will not have enough room it, yeah it, to it, to store the blessings of the lord now once again i just need to say um, this might be um, financial, this might be things that we receive from God, but it's also spiritual blessings that we can receive from God. Yes, I just want to make one thing clear. When we read Malachi 3 verse 10, it's not an invitation and a blessing. That the, that that the blessing is not preceded by invitation. This is a command. Yes, bring it. Bring it. It, it's not if, it, well, if you, you can bring the tithe if you want to. That we are going to have to recap and make sure we understand this right at the beginning. The tithe belongs, belongs to, to God. In our very first lesson, we made sure that everybody knew God is the owner. that God is the owner of everything anyway. And that actually it's not just one tithe that belongs to Him. Everything belongs to Him. But in the end, He asks for one-tenth that must be returned to His house for a very specific reason. And, and if you have brought the tithe, you have not given anything from your side to the Lord. 
because that belongs to him. That we just need to realize. So over and above your tithe, we need to bring in offerings that we bring from our 90%, which God says, this is yours, you work with that. Now, the first thing that we need to realize that the tithing system is not something that belongs to the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. to the Jews, as we would say, because we read and we see in Genesis chapter 14 that um, Abram, after he rescued his nephew Lot um, while there was war, um, he paid tithe to Melchizedek, All right. who was the king and the priest of the of the time of the time of God. So he returned tithe of everything that was there. So, and and when Abram was there, there was no nation of Israel. Yeah, you, you yet. cannot you cannot speak of of the Jews. In, in, in by in by Genesis fourteen, no. there was not there wasn't yet a, a a nation that was referred to as the Israelites or known as the Jews. So yes. we cannot, if you looked at that, and then we cannot say that tithing is actually just supposed to be pertaining to the Jewish yes. nation. And the other thing that we need to realize is that um, that the same as the Sabbath doesn't belong to a certain group of people; mm. it belongs to humanity, because it was given. In the beginning, then when there was no other nations, it was Adam and Eve, it was given to mankind. The same thing, the tithing system. Well, that's just an interesting thought in there. If you say that the Sabbath only belongs to the Jews, then marriage also belong, only and belongs to, to, to the, the Jews. Jews. And the two of them were given at the same time in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, and we don't want to go there. We don't <laughs> want to go there. Yeah. So, after chapter 14 in, in, in Genesis, we see that just after that, in chapter 15, we read there from verse 1, after these things, now this was previously after he gave his tithe and everything, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, do not fear Abram. This was after he honored God with his tithe, right? I am a shield to you, your reward shall be very great. <laughs> so the Lord said to him, you will have a blessing. And then Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me since I am childless and the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus? And Abram said, Since you have given no offspring to me, one born in my house is my heir. Then behold, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This man will not be your heir, but one who will come forth from your body, he shall be your heir. And we can see that Abraham received the favor of the Lord mm. after he even honored God with his tithing. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's actually very beautiful that the Lord had a discussion with him after the fact that he brought his tithe and, and honored God for it. Because if you think about it, he was successful um, in his quest to save his, his, nephew. his nephew Lot. And because of that thankfulness, he came when he, when he, when he met the, the, the priest of the mm. time, Melchizedek, he said to him, I will honor my God by giving you the type of everything that I have. Mm. And, and this brought favor upon him when, yes. when the Lord looked upon him. And, and, and the Lord was impressed by this gesture, shall I put it like mm. that? And he promised him that I will greatly bless you. Now, this is an interesting thing to see that how did the, the Lord bless Abram? Because Abram said to him, Lord, there's one thing that I do need. I don't have an heir. I don't have an heir. I, I don't have any children. So there are many ways in which God will, will bless you. It's yeah. not only... It's not just monetary. There we go. Yes. Okay. Right. So we have now spoken about a tithe. So let's just make sure. What is the word tithe means. Now, let me first go back um, to maths. Um, <laughs> if you take an apple and you cut it in two, what do you have? Two halves. Two halves. Of one whole. On one whole. And that is 50%, right? 50%, okay. 50%. If you cut the two halves again, what do you get? Then you quarters. get four quarters. And that is 25%. <laughs> now, I'm not going to ask you to cut <laughs> yeah, it again. I was thinking to myself, you just must ask not me anything more again. because my math was but, not but very good. But if you want to cut it, <laughs> like, a, like, like a pizza, 
if you want to cut it, and you cut it in 10 pieces, you want all those 10 pieces to be the same amount. Now, this is same exactly... Same equal size, yeah. Yes, this is what a tithe is. A tithe is equal to a tenth. A tenth is equal to a tithe. And this is the first thing that we should realize, that I can't say I tithe if I bring an offering to the Lord. Let's say I my salary is um, 10,000 rand a month. If I bring 500 rand, I can't call it a tithe because it's not 10%. Because 10% 10 of 10,000 is 1,000 rand. And this is the thing that we need to realize from the beginning that when, when we speak about tithe, we speak about 10% of your income. Okay, so you, what you basically get down to is that a, the word tithe is not just a general comment in the of, of an offering that I bring. It's not just a, a, a something that I call the offering no, no, that it, I bring it, it, to yeah, God. Yes. It, it, it literally is a tithe, it's a tithe of, of yes. my income. A tithe is not an offering. An offering is an offering. Okay. Tithe is something else. But let's see what what did God say about the tithe. And we go to Leviticus chapter 27, okay. verse 30 and verse 32. I think you have it. There. I have it, so let's read 30. Thus, all the tithe of the land, of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. Hmm. It is holy to the Lord. Verse 32. For every tenth part of herd or flock, whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. So the Lord says, basically when it comes here, everything that you farm with, everything that is produced, um, be it money, be it flocks, be it your, your, your fruit trees or your crops, 10% belongs to me. Okay. This is what the Lord says. And he says, it is holy unto me. Now that holy, I always try to explain it to people. It is holy in the sense that when you set something apart for the Lord, it is holy. Let me take, for instance, the, the communion um, utensils that we use. Um, we don't use it just to, um, if I'm preaching, just bring me a cup of water from the, from the, the, the you glasses. Let's use one of the, the communion glasses. glasses. And no, no, we don't do that because it, is, use. because it is holy unto the it's Lord. It's been consecrated yeah. to the Lord yes. for His use. Thus the tithe is also holy unto the Lord. So we can only use it for a specific use. Mm. And we will get to that just now if we if we look at that. Okay. Now, uh, maybe you want to go to Genesis chapter 14 um, and there read for us chapter 18 to 20 and then I will turn to Hebrews chapter 7 and you can read verses 1 to 9 at home but I will all only read Verse number 9. You can read for us. Okay, Genesis 14 from verse 18. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of God the Most High, and a blessed. he blessed Abram by saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and of earth, and praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. And then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. All right, we okay. already read that one. Yes. So in, in uh, Hebrews 7 verse 9, we read, And to, so to speak, through Abram, even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes. Now, mm. this, this is sometimes confusing, but let's just bring it back to so that we all can understand it. If you bring these two verses together, Abram paid to Melchizedek. But Abram is the father of the Jewish nation. But Levi was the... Uh, one, one of the twelve tribes. tribes. That was set aside to work for the Lord. From them comes the priests, um, Abram and his descendants. And then there's the Levites and they all worked in the sanctuary okay. system. Yeah, Aaron and, and his descendants, they, they, were, they were priests. They were the priests. They were part of the Levites, but the whole Levite nation were, were workers in the temple, yes. workers for the temple. Yes. So that, that not all of them were priests. Some of them were the cleaners. Some of them were um, 
the menders of whatever was was needed mending yeah. in 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 the uh, um, in the tent of, uh, of of the temple as we yeah. know it, but that was the one tribe that did not receive an inheritance. Inheritance. He didn't receive like land, any land. But, yes, they only received cities, but the they gave. Now, now let's let's not jump to conclusions here. They gave through their father Abram. They gave tithe because they came from his loins. So they gave tithe to him. So what does that say about people that is working for the Lord today? If they get paid by the tithe, they should, should also pay tithe. They should also return a faithful tithe. Okay, so there's no one who's exempt from tithe. Babe. Nobody is exempt from tithe. Now, okay. we, we can go further and we can see that even Jacob, we're not going to read it, Jacob a little bit later when he was on his way to Bethel, um, and to go to the land where he can find a wife. Um, he saw the Lord there, and then he made a promise to the Lord. Genesis 28, and we read it in verse 22 that we see there. He says, if the Lord looks after me, mm. and he brings me back to the land where I come from, then I will certainly give him the tithe. If you have it quickly there, so that the viewers cannot say that I am just thumb sucking here. <laughs> but that we are reading it from God's word. Genesis 28, verse 22. Um, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. So there he says... He, he was actually uh, uh, making a promise to his God. Lord, look after me. Watch over my, me and on my journey. Bring me safely back to my home. And I promise today that I will bring a tithe back of everything that I, that I earn. Okay. All right. So now we, we have quickly looked at the tithe contract. And we have seen that the Lord says the tithe belongs to me. Mm -hmm. You should bring the tithe back to me. And now if we remember Malachi 3.10, it states there, bring it so that uh, to the storehouse so that they, they can be food in my house. So where's the storehouse? Because I have heard that some people say, but it is my tithe, mm -hmm. and I can decide what I want to do with my tithe. If I see my neighbor or somebody that is struggling along the way, um, I give my tithe to them. What or some does, good cause. Yes. Yeah. So what does Malachi 3.10 specifically tell us? It says that we should bring the, the the whole tithe back to the to the. Let's let's read it. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. So we, we must ask where where is the house of God? Well, while they were in the wilderness, right? It was the tent, the tabernacle, and they should have brought their gifts there mm -hmm. and their offerings there. That was where they were worshiping. So they should bring it to his house. That's right. Uh, I think the main thing that we need to remember, uh, if we look back in history, is that when the, when the Levites were given this beautiful task to look after the, the house of, of the Lord, the re remember they became the servants of their brothers when it comes to spiritual uh, spirituality. They became the, the ones who looked after the spiritual side of, of their brothers. So the rest of the tribes were tasked of looking after them, mm -hmm. so that they did, that the Levite was not supposed to have a secondary job, and where he had to go and work to look after his wife and children and, and earn an income so that he can at least have a living with his family. So, so what is the, <coughs> so what is the lesson that we learn? They should concentrate on working for the Lord. And they should trust the Lord to sustain them. Mm -hmm. Now, if we draw that back to everybody that is working today for the Lord, what should they be doing? Having a secondary income. Well, not according and, to, to, the, <laughs> to the, the, the whole concept <clears throat> of tithing. Yes. And that is where we, we come and say, no, people that work for the Lord should trust in the Lord that He will bless them. But their prosperity depends on God's children being faithful in returning the tithe. 
So if God's house is struggling, we should not look for the challenge or the problem within God's house. We should look for it for the people that is worshipping God, not being faithful. Because in Malachi 3.10, God says, you all rob me. And you say in what? In the tithes and the offerings. Mm. But let us, let us quickly go to Deuteronomy chapter 12. And there's a few verses there that we're going to read together from okay. verse 5 to verse 14. It's, it's a few, so let me start so long. And it says, but you shall seek the Lord at the place which the Lord your God will choose from all your tribes to establish his name there for his dwelling, and there you shall come. So there's a specific place, right? Mm -hmm. There you shall bring your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the contributions of your hand, your offerings, your free will offerings, and the firstborn of your herd and of your flock. They also, you and your household, shall eat before the Lord your God and rejoice in all your undertakings in which the Lord your God has blessed you. Well, this is actually pretty clear, isn't it? If you wanted where your tithe is supposed to, where the God's tithe is supposed to go, here's the answer. Let's, let's read verse 8 for me. Verse 8. Verse 8. 12 verse 8. Because this is very important. I can do with my tithe which I, what I want what to do. do. Okay. You are not to do as we do here today. Everyone doing as they see fit. Since you have not yet reached the resting place and the inheritance the Lord of your God is giving you. Okay, so they, they have not went into the into promised Canaan, land yet. And we have not gone into the promised land because we are still awaiting God's kingdom to come. Mm. So therefore, we cannot do as we please. We should do as God directs us. This is what we should be doing. Well, I had a discussion about, a discussion about tithe this week with someone at my workplace. And um, the, this person just couldn't understand the concept of tithe. He, mm -hmm. he asked me, he said, why on earth would you give a tenth of your income to the church? And I looked at him and I said, I don't give it to the church, I give it to God. The church belongs to God. Yeah. So in, it, might, the Yulu, it might look like I give mm. it to the church, but I'm, I'm giving it to God. And he says, but why? <laughs> there was this moment that I realized I cannot have a big discussion with this man. I looked at him I said, simply said, because God says I must. I mean, what else do we need to know here? This is the tithe. It's required by God. It's not discussable. It's not that I can go into a bargaining concept with God. You know, we're talking about a contract that yeah. God signs with us. If, do you think that if you are you signed a contract now with someone, let's say you buy a house from someone, we, we now go um, and we sit down and we sign the contract. Now a day or two later, yeah. then I come to you and I say to you, um, but you know this specific part in the contract, I can actually understand a little bit different. I can do a different interpretation of it. And I, I think I'm rather going to do it this way I'm going to do. I'm telling you that, that you're going to lose your house. Yes. That contract is not going to be standing. Because the problem that we have today is that we want to enter into a discussion with God. We want to reinterpret everything that He requires. And if there's one thing that's the truth, it's that our our faith and what God requires of us is really not complicated. It's quite simple and it's very clear. Yeah. When God says so, we must just listen. It's as easy as that. Just, just to bring the, the concept of a house is when you buy a new car, you don't ask why should I take it for the first few services while it's still under contract and while it's still under lease. Why should I take it to the agents? Mm. Because you know it's not going to be valid. So you do what you need to do without questions. You might be moaning and grumbling about it, but you still do it. So with God, it's the same thing. He says, the tithe belongs to me. If you withhold the tithe, you are robbing me. God is very clear on that one. And we need to understand that if I do not return my tithe, mm. and, and maybe I'm just becoming quiet here and just saying, listen, I have not seen anybody that has not received anything. 
I was asked a, a blessing question. from some kind. I was yeah. asked a question um, during last week's study. I was asked a question by somebody else when we were giving a study, um, and, and they said, but what should I give if I do not get anything? I said, so you don't receive anything. No income. No, no food, no clothes, no place to stay, nothing. And the person said, no, I do. I said, so are you returning to God? In kind, what you receive, you receive in kind. So we, we cannot come empty handed to God. We must come to God with something in our hands, saying thank you to Him for what He has blessed us with. Mm. Right. So let us move on. So, what is the purpose of tithe? We have already touched it. Leviticus 27, verse 30 says, It is holy unto the Lord. But let us quickly look at Numbers. Numbers chapter 18. Chapter 18, and there we are going to go to verse 21. Numbers chapter 18, verse 21, mm -hmm. and verse 24. If you have it, you can read it for us tonight. I give to the Levites all the tithes in Israel as their inheritance in return for the work they do while serving at the tent of meeting. And then verse 24. Instead, I give to the Levites as their inheritance the tithes that the Israelites present as an offering to the Lord. That is why I said concerning them, they will have no inheritance among the Israelites. Okay. So firstly, we must understand, and right in the beginning, in the first lesson, we said God is the owner of everything. And he says, the tithe belongs to me. And if God says, I give the tithe to the Levites, hmm. it should not be discussable. That's right. It belongs to God. He can give it to whomever He wants. It's the same thing God says. He gives spiritual gifts and He gives it through He gives it through the Holy Spirit to us. We cannot decide what we want. We just receive. So God decides and He decided to give it to the Levites. Now, this is today. We can say the tribe of Levite is the ministerial force in the Old Testament. <laughs> yeah. Because they were working. So everybody that is the ministerial force today should also be paid from the tithe because God gives it to them because that is their inheritance. And if the rest of us are robbing God, we are actually robbing the Levites or the ministerial forces' inheritance. Mm. And therefore, they will suffer. Now, um, this is one thing that we will uh, have to look at. Um, there's, there's, there's a place in Nehemiah, and I think you are going there now, what you want to read for us that says, if we do not return the, the consequences, tithe, of what will happen? This passage in Nehemiah is actually very sad. If you want to uh, page with me to Nehemiah 13, and we read from verse 10. Mm -hmm. And Nehemiah writes, he says, And I also learned that the portion assigned to the Levites had not been given to them, and that all the Levites and the musicians responsible for the service had gone back to their own fields. So I rebuked the officials and asked them, why is the house of God neglected? And then I called them together and stationed them on their posts. And all of Judah brought the tithes of grain, new wine and olive oil into the storerooms. So what happened in Nehemiah's time when he visited the temple, he found out that the people were not tithing anymore. Mm -hmm. And the whole house of God was broken down to such a point that he, he had to ask, why, why is the house of God neglected in such a way? The, even the priests and the workers, the Levites, could no longer perform their duties because their families were starving. Mm -hmm. They had to start working in, in fields just to make a living. And Nehemiah rebuked, rebuked them and he said, listen now, this needs to stop. And he put everybody back in their positions where they were supposed to be, where they were working in the church. Mm -hmm. And he came to Judah and he said, this is not how you are supposed to be living. Where is your tithes? Mm -hmm. And they started bringing back the tithes and the house of the Lord could be run again the way that God intended it to be. So this is the one thing that we need to understand. When the tithe is not being paid... We cannot expect the church of God to function. Yes. 
And, and we might have this idea that we say, but God is the head of the church. Why doesn't he look after it? I mean, he owns the cattle on a thousand wheels. Well, he's looking after <laughs> it because he says but that he I gave strict mind. instructions as how the Lord's house needs to be mm. looked after. It's by you and I bringing our tithes. So if the house of the Lord is neglected mm -hmm. and broken down and run down because of a lack of tithes, then we are in great great trouble. trouble we are yes. in big trouble and and we are not honoring god in the way that we yeah. are looking after his house okay so now we have already established that the tithe belongs to god it is a real tithe we must bring it back to him it belongs to him he decides what he does with the tithe mm. but now here comes a very um pertinent question if i bring a tithe um do I bring it on my gross income or do I bring it on my net income? What do so, I do? So, so you mean, shall I, shall I first let the bank and the, uh, the debit orders and everything go off from my salary and then pay tithe on what is left, on yes. what I have left to spend? Or the moment as my, my, my salary is paid in, I bring my tithe before anything is deducted. Yeah. Well, I think it depends on how you want your blessings. Do you want your blessings on your gross or you want your blessings on your net? Well, I want <laughs> gross blessings. I don't want net blessings. And that is normally what I tell people. And then the other thing is that we need to look at. So you, you give on everything that you receive. Mm. You give a 10% of that. Now, if we go to 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 9 to 16, we find the story of Elijah coming to the lady, right, which the, God has instructed her to look after him. You know, she was picking up some sticks to get some wood to, to prepare the last meal for her and her son. And then Elijah got there, but we also see in that story that the Lord said to her that he is sending his prophet to her. So when he comes and she says, your Lord, your Lord um, has, has, has told me. But he says to her, well, go get me some water, but while you're busy, just bring me some bread. Bring me something to eat. Yeah, and, and bake a bread. And then she says, but I don't have anything. And then he says, bring first for me. And, and this is where we should see this word, these words. Bring first for me. Now, he was representing God. He was a Levite. Right? In the sense, he was a Levite. Not by birth, but he was a Levite because he was working for God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, first you should bring and then blessings can flow. You cannot expect that blessings will come in if you still intend to give. So th that's also another thing. When we receive our salaries, when we receive our incomes, we should not wait until there's nothing left to tithe. We should first tithe because that teaches us to trust in the Lord. Okay, so basically what it comes down to is you say before you pay anything else, yes. bring the full tithe and, and let it be, be, be paid right at the beginning. Yes, yes. Before you pay anything else. Uh, I was listening to um, uh, someone in the church that presented this, this, the tithe um, concept a, a few weeks back. Mm -hmm. And... I was very impressed. She said her dad taught her how to draw up a budget when she was still in primary school. Yo. I, was, I was very impressed by that. And she said her dad said, the first thing that you pay is, the tithe. is your tithe. And then secondly, you save another tithe. And then from there on, you, you pay whatever is necessary to pay. But I, I was so impressed that she said her father taught her the very first thing that you pay is the tithe time. that needs to go to exactly. God. I, and that, that, that made me think, you know what, we need to teach our children, even from a very young age, mm -hmm. the concept of tithing. Even if, you're, if your children are still in primary school or very young and they receive a, a po pocket money, Teach them how to work out the tithe. Let them bring that tithe to the house of mm -hmm. God. Let, let them pay that tithe as a tenth, as a tithe to, to God. It, 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 will, 
it will be it will become a habit that's actually what i want to say it, it, it will become a habit by the time that they leave your home by the time that they start working and earn a salary from, uh, from the it, own, it will be second nature. It will be second nature. It will not be so tempting to use God's money for yourself. Yes. They so, will be you that will be used to the fact that before I pay anything else, I bring the tithe. And and the sooner you start returning tithe, when you still have little, the easier it is to return tithe when you receive more. Mm -hmm. But when you wait until you have a lot of money then all of a sudden 10% becomes a lot of money. Mm, that's right. This is, this is very interesting. But there's just one thing that um, I think we need to read this verse. So because I find that from time to time that people uh, come to church and they have not planned to bring to God anything in thankfulness. Remember, we, we read... Malachi 3 and it says bring the tithes you have robbed me in what tithes and offerings. and offerings now we see that the children of Israel had to go three times a year they had to go to the place where God had appointed for them and then they should bring their tithes and their offerings there and we read it in Deuteronomy chapter 16 and I wonder it's only the last part you can read the whole one if you want to 16 verse 16 okay I'm going to read the last part of verse 16 and then verse 17 as well no one should appear before the Lord empty-handed each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way your God has blessed you I, I, it's unbelievable verse I don't know if I have a gift large enough but I want to um, bring to you a quote of Charles Spurgeon. He said, give the way you love. Is that beautiful? Give the way you love and measure your love by the way that you, you give. give. Yeah. No. You know, God has given everything to us. Yeah. And what are we giving back to him? And, and he asks when it comes to our, our, our money, to our income, he asks one time. Yeah, one time. And even that we want to bargain with. Yes. But he says they don't come to me empty handed because whenever they went there, they should have brought their tithe. But remember, the tithe belongs to God. If you have brought back the tithe, you have not given anything from yours to God. So together with the tithe, there should be an offering. And the Lord says, You shall not appear before me empty handed. Empty -handed. Now, this is one thing that I see lots and lots in church that people sit there when the offering plate comes along they just do this or they oh, just do this yeah. if if i understand this we cannot appear before the lord empty-handed mm. even if you bring the smallest amount because we see um that widower that that, that came into the temple she gave the least of everybody of everybody but God said she gave the most because she gave out of the, the little, little that, that she did. had. She did not give out of everything out that of she had. Out of her abundance. And, and this is something that is, that is very pertinent that we must understand. We cannot come to the Lord and appear before the Lord empty-handed. We want to thank Him. We want to say with our lips, we thank you, Lord. But the Lord says there's one way you can show me how thankful you are. You must take from where it hurts you <laughs> and you must bring it to me so that I can really see if you love me. And that's only one way we can do it. That is by what we own. We can give it back. And just between you and me, we must remember that God owns everything. Anyway. So even the 90% belongs to him. I, I think you, you touched on the, on the right word there and that's love. And, and I think as Charles Spurgeon also said, you must give, give the way that you love. If we are supposed to have the character of God, isn't it uh, uh, most important that we learn how to love like he loves? Yes. He gave everything to us because of his love. Yes. Now, I don't think we think about tithing. As love. As love. Uh, you know, if you, if, you, if, you, if you want to make someone angry, then you touch their money. Yes. I mean, that's just, that's just one thing that's very true on this earth. But 
the moment we realize that tithing is part of the way that we love God, love his work, and love his church, mm -hmm. Then we, then we get a, 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 a whole paradigm shift around this concept of, of tithing. tithing yes. We're not paying God for blessings. No. We are, we are saying thank you. We that are, he is our creator God. And then we bring our offerings to say, this is for what you have given us. Okay. And we want to thank you. So we must give a tithe. We should not come empty-handed to the Lord. And then lastly, please bring an honest tithe. You know, um, we always say tithing is between you and the Lord. You know what you earn, but bring a faithful tithe. So if you, every time you receive money, if you salary-wise, it's 12 times. Bring 12 tithes to the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you are being paid fortnightly, do that that way. If you, if, if you receive money on a daily basis, collect it until you get to church and bring it back to the Lord because mm -hmm. that is where the tithe belongs. So, we, we have seen that a tithe is a tithe at 10%. Let's not quibble about that one. The second one is, we should bring it to the storehouse and let the Lord decide what He wants to do with His money. And even if you bring your gift, you know, I, I always say to people, when you want to give me something, you should also allow me to use the gift in the way I want to because you have given it to me now. Mm. It does not belong to you anymore. So allow God to use the gifts that you give him the way he sees fit. Mm. And then we must honor God first. Don't wait until you see, well, I've what I, I, I don't have anything you. left this month. Well, next God will understand. So do proper planning for and, your tithe and your offering. And, and this is one thing that I've heard so many times. If people, oh, pastor, I cannot return my tithe, but God will understand. And then I always tell people this. What you think God will understand and what God understands might be two different things. Because God understands that if you do not bring back the tithe and your free will offering, you are robbing him. You think, oh, God will understand because, because he's gracious. But he has said, this is the contract. I will bless you if you bring back the tithe. Mm. And the last thing is, when we have given the gift, we should not moan and complain about how that gift is used. This is one thing that we should realize. Um, because so I, 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 see, I see people I see people in church many times. They come and they say, but pastor, this is my money. Like, no, my brother. No, my sister. As soon as that money is placed in the, the plate, Offering plate, or it is deposited into the bank, if you do it via EFT or whatever, um, it doesn't belong to you anymore. So what you're saying is, don't first of all, don't use the tithe as a bargaining chip. Yes, no, not at all. And second of all, be a thankful giver. Be a joyful giver. Give, yes. So don't pay the tithe and lie awake all night because you had to give that money away. Wait, yes, <laughs> because that is not going to do good for you be, then. Be a thankful and a joyful, joyful giver. giver. Yes. In the knowledge and the firm belief and trust that the Lord will look after his children because he promised it. Yes. Let's just for lastly go to Matthew chapter 25. And here is a, a parable that Jesus told. Um, and we read there from verse 19 to 21. As soon as we read it, you will know where it comes from. Now, after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Now, he gave each talent, right? Uh, the one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Now, dearly beloved, God has given me a small salary. This is what he has entrusted to me. 
Am I faithfully looking after the money that God gave me? Am I managing Am it well? Am I managing well? it well? And responsibly. And, and, yes, and remember now, let's go back to our theme. Manage, and I've shortened it a little bit, manage until he comes. So we must manage God's funds for him until he comes. Mm. And this is, this is the 100% that he gave to me. So I must give it back to him. Manage it in a, well, in, in, in a good way. Don't say, well, uh, this month I cannot afford to return the tithe, so next month I will give two, because believe you me. You won't have money to do it. You won't have money <laughs> next month to do that. Mm. Rather owe the bank. Rather owe somebody else. But don't owe the Lord. Because he wants to give us a blessing. And when you start tithing, you will see that it's actually a blessing coming your way. Because God says, I will open the storehouse of heaven for you and pour out the blessings of heaven so that you will not have room enough to store that. Is there anything still that you want to bring to us on the tithing contract? I think the main concept that we are discussing this this whole quarter the fact that we need need to manage well bring back your tithe yes. because God asks us to do so and the rest of the 19th spend that responsibly yes because it actually because still we, belongs to the Lord he just gives it to you to yes. live with because in the end I wonder how many times we think that we tithe and we don't receive blessings but in actual fact, we are wasting Pretty money true. on things that is not supposed to be wasted on. Yes. So be a responsible manager, not only in giving the tithe, but also in the way that you spend the other nine tenths. Yes. I think that is, that is uh, um, actually what the tithing concept is supposed to teach us. Mm. That if we are responsible and joyful givers, that even we should be responsible and joyful spenders. <laughs> amen, amen. It was good to uh, study with you once again out of God's Word. And um, we see you next week as we continue with our studies, manage until he comes. Renee, will you close with a word of prayer for us, please? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this wonderful lesson. Lord, and we ask your forgiveness if we have not did our part of the contract if we have not brought our tithe dear lord please i need you to make this an important question for us every day are we giving with love yeah. is our gift a, a beautiful way of saying thank you for the blessings that you have already poured out of us or are we thinking that the tithe is supposed to buy blessings from the Lord? I'm so sorry, Lord, if we have this wrong idea of tithing. We want to thank you for blessing us with your son, Jesus Christ. And that you have paid it all. And all that you ask from us when it comes to our finances is one tenth. Look after your church. Build us in our faith. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. See you next week.